Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm Sahar. Um, I came from Yorta 4, uh, originally from Israel. Um, I really want to give this introduction to all the beings, family, friends, and to all of you, and to my dear friend Afik that got birthday today, so Mazal Tov. <laughs> Happy birthday, and I'm happy karma brought us together, and let's practice together, and let's go dharma from here. So this introduction I'm going to talk about um, Zen Buddhism, and um, past karma, releasing past karma, my experience uh, with past karma here. I brought with me really heavy, big backpack of suffering karma and I came to here to, to break the chains and go out of circle of suffering. I got to know Zen Buddhism after really heavy breakthrough in my life, uh, which was a really had a psychotic episode and first time I got to Zen Buddhism I met my teacher uh, Dharma Master Tamir Masas uh, in Israel and for the first time in my life I've been told put it all down um, I was really attached to my past I had tons of questions like what brought me to what brought me to this situation of being in this like really bad breakpoint of psychosis how I got myself here how to get out so I came to um, I started to practice and as I say first time I've been told put it all down and I was pretty shocked because I try to have uh, try to figure out uh, the reasons, what happened, why, uh, why all what is happen happened to me, and I try to do all this process in my head. Um, but first time, it was really down to earth uh, with practice. So I started to sit meditation and breathing to my tangent. It was like every meditation for me was I'm just watching memories and thoughts like trains comings and goings and I even can see like brown floor I can't see clearly at all slowly I saw how my how I was slave to my desires, how I was slave to my desires to drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, food, um, judging and checking myself in every moment. And this kind of practice brought me to a situation which I can really come back to the moment and have like much stronger willpower. I, I can do, I, I can do it, I can go beyond these patterns, I can go beyond this desire, I can go beyond the attachment of, of my feelings, my perceptions, my thoughts, the five skandhas. So in my practice, even before I came here, I got known um, the, the great Bodhisattva way and I took on myself the four vows, which you know, being, all beings are infinite, countless. I vow to, we vow to help them all. The illusions are countless. I vow to cut through them all. The teaching is infinite. I vow to learn it all. And the great path is unimaginable. I vow to walk on it. And I saw when I practice for when I practice to all beings, less suffering, I can see more clearly. I really understood that the best way I can do 
for all my family and all beings and all my friends and all the people I was hurt in my past and and I'm also a being so the best thing for me will be to practice and put it all down. So I decided to leave everything behind and come here to a three month Kiolche. Yeah, I'm already here two months. In the beginning it was like damn <laughs> god damn the first day i was here it was like shit man what have you done like what have you done how are you really like going to do it for three months like come on man mm -hmm. and then i was all the time remembering to myself okay that's for all being that's for your own good and you took it as a commitment so just do it and just do it, you, leave every, you left everything behind, you took it as a commitment, so now nowhere to run, just sit and meditate. So I was dealing with so much, I was struggled with so much pain, like physical pain, knee pain, back pain, you know, we are on the same ship here. <laughs> and it was very frustrating, very, very frustrating so much and it brought like all the emotional to come up and all my karma came up and as i said before like seven hours a day of meditating is enough to see like all your life passing through your eyes in front of you while you're watching the same dot on the floor i was also really amazed from the kogan interviews um practice because this kind of practice just reflected me perfectly how am I attached to my words and to my thoughts and to all the skandhas, feelings and perceptions. And slowly, after every Kogan interview, I felt like, okay, I can see more clearly, I can now see where my feelings come from okay just release it take the kogan and come back to sit to the meditation that brought me also feel frustrated and gave me um like a good like a really well-known feeling that i felt like i'm inside a cage just trying to look out outside to reality and just I was felt like I'm looking through the hole of the door lock I was looking like yeah like this on reality and I just felt like crazy desire I really want to be there I really want to attain it I really want to get the moment I really want to get enlightenment and help on beings <laughs> and for the first time in my life i feel actually that i got the way to do it and it's here it's really here and now in our practice and yeah actually what's happening now i'm just sitting on the gray mat and talking with you even if like in the past i thought i felt like a dolphin that just want to go back to his home, to the sea. But when the floor is brown and the wall is white and I'm just sitting and talking with you on this great mat, so where is the past karma? Where is the suffering? And where, where is the eye? I will share also the highlight of this retreat and for me was the intensive week. I don't know if you know intensive week, but what we did here in the intensive week, we were practicing intensively for a week, <laughs> uh, which means uh, for six nights we have been sit. Um, we had the same schedule and in the night we had five sittings of 50 minutes in a row. And in the seventh night we were sitting um, for 10 sittings, like from the night till the morning. Um, in a row. So for me going through this intensive week was 
really leave everything behind, like totally everything. It was like just go beyond the tiredness, the hunger, the desires, the feelings, the thoughts. The best way was to go through it was like, don't attach, don't make, don't want, just... There was another two, someone is remember, there was like five, five rules, I remember three. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I found myself even outside the meditation, practicing when I was walking, when I was go sleep, like, just do it, everything, like, and don't make. In this intensive week, I, after the first day, I was just crying and chanting and like feel all the, like all the miserability of my life and just coming up, all my karma. And it was like every moment I just put it all down and come back to chant, come back to Ju Song Mubi and so on though. And every day we, in this week, we slept like three hours and I saw like, hmm, I, I can do it. My willpower got much stronger. I could do it. I was actually much more energetic than like in every other situation in my life. Even like that we were practiced really hard and slept really like not much hours. It was for me a point which I saw, okay, my mind can be much stronger than my body and, and I can do it. The last night came and we have been sitting like for 10 hours. I felt really, really high and really satisfied and of myself and everyone. Went to sleep and woke up to like really clear mind and beautiful morning. The sun was shining and the birds were singing and I came to chanting and it was like really in intimate, great chanting moment uh, of all together. And there was a Dharma talk after that I wanted to continue with, with practice intensively. So our great teacher, uh, master, told me you should rest and you should yeah just come back to the regular practice and yeah don't like don't kill yourself don't just keep going. And after it I we came back to the regular practice and I felt like okay I can do it from all my heart. But actually, still, I felt okay. I, I still felt the same attachment as before to like get beyond and get this, you can call it enlightenment, and, and get this moment. And I got back to the same Kogan with expectation that, okay, I'm going to pass it and Unfortunately and surprisingly, I didn't. <laughs> so actually, that's my big practice of releasing the expectation and releasing, releasing the expectation. Yeah, and here I really cut my past karma, which I don't create a future karma when I'm coming back here to this moment. Just brown floor. I'll share with you that I was super afraid to come and talk to you here. I really did. And... I really didn't want to bring autobiography of mine to like come and open my big backpack of suffering karma. But for me it's important to take my karma and 
and just convert it to how can I help you? And for me, that's that's the way to release the past karma. That's the way to release suffering. That's the way to release I, when we really can see each other. And how can I help you? And for me, this moment is the moment of cutting, cutting the suffering karma wheel and just starting to move the dharma wheel. Can I be spontaneous, see people the way they are? Can I see white wall? Can I hear the birds? In the next meditation, can I hear the birds? Can I hear like when people are swallowed, they spit? <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our Zen master. Thank you, everyone.